God is so good. He is so good. We just have to trust him. He's faithful, but are you faithful? His word is true, but are you keeping your part? You know, his word, all of his word is true. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But it's all his word comes with a condition. There's your part. There's your obedience unto him. Amen? And I really like what pastor said because man did not put me here. Man did not give me a calling. God appointed me. God appointed our pastors over us. And they are amazing pastors. And we need to honor them. We need to submit to their authority. We need to respect them. Because they are guarding over our souls. Everything that pastor says to us, every word that comes out of his mouth, it's not because he, he wants to correct you all the time or, or whatnot that you might feel like, oh, he's going, always telling us or getting after us. No, he's protecting you. He's guarding over your soul. He's trying to lead you to Jesus, to the right way, to the truth, to the way of life and life abundantly. Because this, our, our Pastor Ronick and Pastor Kevin, they hear from the Lord. They have a heart for God and for people because Father put this love in their heart for us. So just, you know, that's not even the message, but somebody needed to hear that. Just honor your pastors, our pastors. We are blessed, amen? So blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what I want to share, I'm going to go ahead and just share my testimony first. But really, it's about tithe and offering. There, oh, and I see people getting up, going to the restroom. Just kidding. You see, you hear tithe and offering, you're like, oh, no, here we go. We're going to talk about giving. But let me tell you something. Father gave. His one and only son, he gave because he loved you so much. So much. He gave his one and only son. Imagine you only have one child knowing that your child is going to go to earth to die for people you love, but not just any normal death. He's going to be punished. He's going to be whipped. He's going to wear a crown of thorns. He's going to be nailed hands and feet, put to shame, spit on, naked on the cross for you. He gave Jesus for you. And yet when it comes to tithes and offering, we can't give what belongs to him, the tithe. Come on. 10%? Come on. Let's be real. Why? Because maybe something might have a hold on you. It's called money. You see, money shouldn't be your God or shouldn't own you. You tell the money where to go. There's only one Lord and one Jesus. And we submit to him. And when you submit to Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you resist the devil and he flees. Amen? Hallelujah. God is good. He is so good. Tithe. Turn with me to Malachi 3, 8 through 12. Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Should people cheat God? Others say, rob God. Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me in tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all, bring all. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough 
food in my house. If you do, says the Lord, I, if you do, that's your part. Tithes and offerings is your part. If you do, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Try me, says the Lord. Try me. Try me. Try me. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. That means he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord. But that's in the Old Testament. Matthew 23, 23. You should tithe, yes. You want me to say it again? You should tithe, yes. It's written. You see, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty we could be rich. Did he say, just to meet your need? To be rich is to have more than enough. Not just financially. We're talking about spiritually. We're talking about we are blessed because we're healthy. We have arms and feet. We can praise the Lord. We can just show up to church without someone pointing a gun at our face. Yet you can't give him his tithe. Come on. Tithe. What is tithe? 10% of any increase, your gross income. That means not once you pay your bills, not once you pay your taxes, not once you go get your manicure, pedicure. Oh, wait, oh, and then let me bring the tithe. Tithe is the first fruits, the top of your gross income. It belongs to God. It was never yours to start with. It belongs to him. And let me tell you what happens. When you just give him back his 10%, you keep your 90% blessed. 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 But if you don't, you get to keep your 100% cursed, cursed. I don't think so. It's just 10%, you all. It's just 10%. Why? Why does this bother people so much? When you do it unto the Lord, knowing that he's the one that gave you life, that he saved you from the pit of hell, that he healed you, he sanctified you, he took all shame, all sickness and disease, it changes. When you bring the tithe, it's different now. You see, your tithe was never meant to, to say, okay, here we go, I'm giving it to a man. No, your tithe is on to the Lord. When you come and you give your tithe with a heart of worship, he receives it. It's worship. You're honoring your father for he is good and his mercy and his love endures forever. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's true. He's faithful. Don't look for loopholes because there's none. There's none. Don't give 6%. Don't give 7%. 10% of all increase. eBay sales, garage sales, you name it, you got it. Amen? Amen? Offering. Offering is anything above the 
You don't have to turn here, but 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give, it will be given back to you. Matthew 6, 31, 33. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need of them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? I'll tell you this. Your offering represents your heart. Just ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, where do you want me to sow? Where do you want me to give? You see, when you honestly have Father's heart, you won't be able to stop giving. You won't be able to stop giving. You're looking for the next person to bless. You're looking for a place to sow seed because you know, you know that not only are you showing God's love towards them or, or just putting it into the kingdom that there's going to be a harvest, whether it be souls, whether it just be advancing the kingdom of God, he's faithful. He's true. He's going to take care of you no matter what. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me share my testimony before I go over my time here. Hallelujah. So you see, you might be thinking right now, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. I barely have enough and you're telling me to tithe. I'm barely making it and you're telling me to tithe to bring 10% of everything I make, not even on what I take home, on the gross? You're kidding me. It's not me that said it. God said it. You see, I've been there. There was a time in my life that I backslid. And I started chasing the things of this world. And I was in college, and they were like, hey, you want a student loan? I'm like, free money? Yeah. You see, but it wasn't just a student loan to pay my school. I said, well, how much, what's the most I can get? So I started getting more student loan and more student loan because you see at that time, I was barely making it. And so when they said, let me give you a loan, I was like, okay. But what happened to me is that I was really poor. But since they were willing to give me money, I took it. I said, hey, I'll pay it later when I'm older or once I have a steady job. And I wasn't obedient to his word. I was not tithing. I was not giving offering. Honestly, I wasn't even living right. I was chasing the things of this world. And what ended up happening is that they had a hold on me. I was actually poor, but in order to mask all that and cover that up, I was taking money and credit cards left and right so I can be driving the latest car, so I could have the latest clothes, the matching purse, so that I can look like I wasn't poor, but I was. Not only physically, but spiritually. And I caught myself in a situation where I was working two jobs, a full-time student, and I was even donating plasma so I could get paid, and it still wasn't enough. For some reason, I felt like I was going deeper and deeper, and like it was like at the the, 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 the money was coming in fast, but it was also disappearing fast. And I was not going anywhere. I was in a rat race, rat race again and again, but the hole was going deeper and deeper. And then it hit me. This is not what Father wants for me. This is not what God wants for me. He wants more. You see, I knew his word. But it's a, there's a difference between knowing the word and knowing the word and making a decision. I will obey your word, Lord. You can know it, but you don't.
don't take the action to obey it. Faith without works is dead. I finally repented. I came to the end of myself. This world can offer nothing. Can, can give you what, what God has for you is so much more. I find myself now fulfilled. Joy, peace, and love that no one can take away. Because he gave it to me. You see, I repented of my ways. Because, yeah, I was going my way. I repented of my ways. I said, Jesus, I follow you. But I also laid out all my debt. Pastor Kevin has spoken about this. To lay it out before God and just say, I repent, Lord. I am sorry for taking, trying to make things work my own way, my own hands, trying to, trying to do things my own way. I repent. Forgive me, not only for taking this debt out and for just relying on myself, but also for not being obedient to your word. You told me to take all tithes and offerings unto you, Lord, and, and I failed. But I know your grace is sufficient enough. So help me, Lord. I tell you this. Ever since then, I started being faithful in my tithe and my offering. Bringing my worship unto God because I knew that he supplies, he supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. All your needs. But then it's more. The tithe is just your obedience, giving him back what is his so that you won't be cursed, so you could be blessed. Amen? But the offering. It's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. And I found myself that sometimes the tithing hurt, and then the Lord's like, now give this. I'm like, you're kidding me. I just got paid. I thought I was going to have this left over for me. Give it. But even when it hurt, even when I drove away in tears, it was not tears because I was sad, because it did hurt. It was tears because I could feel Father say, I will take care of you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you, for I am with you. I am your God. I will never leave you. He is faithful. What I once had a debt of 60000 at the beginning of the, this year was 22000 And I thought, there's no way, because the Lord was like, by the end of the year, you're, you're getting out of this debt. And I'm like, come on, 22000 there's no way. And so, get your eyes off yourself. Trust him. With God, all things are possible. So last Friday, November 25th, all my debt was paid off in full. Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God. And I come to tell you, church, you are next. You are next. You are next. God is not a respecter of persons. But if you obey his word, he never fails. His word never returns back void. Keep your part and he will keep his. Hallelujah. God bless you all.